Welcome back to Serving Up Plumbing with me, David Butler. Today, we're going to be talking about air testing gas systems. Now, this is pretty much for the licensed plumber today. But if you're a homeowner, and especially in the state of Texas, you can actually do your own gas work. I don't generally recommend it, but it does allow it with the state's law that you can pull a permit at your own house and do your own gas work. But before we get into all of that, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. All right, let's talk about air testing gas systems and why we do it. Why do we air test gas systems? To find a leak, right? Well, we're not gonna talk about all the ways we find leaks. What we're just gonna focus on today is testing the system. So, what happens? You smell gas. You call the gas company. The gas company comes out, they find a leak on your home, and oddly enough, most people think the gas company's gonna fix their leak, but they don't. The gas company says, call a licensed plumber. So, they shut your gas off, and now you're without gas. No hot water, no heat. Well, in the middle of the winter, that's a big problem. What do we do? The plumber comes out. We have to put our own test on it, and what we do that with is air. Now, there's some things in the code that you could test it with other gases. You could test it with carbon dioxide. You could test it with nitrogen, but those are expensive gases. There's no reason we would ever do that. So we use air compressors and we pump it up or we just use a hand pump. We pump it up with air. How much air do we put on it and how long? That comes into the code. The code tells us, the International Fuel Gas Code, the International Residential Code, talks about how long we're supposed to test it how much pressure we're supposed to put on it. And of course, there's different kinds of gas systems that need different pressures. How do we know what pressure we're putting on it? We use gas gauges. These gauges are what we call diaphragm gauges. They're about 65 to $70 a piece. They're very delicate gauges, but they're also very accurate. We have a needle pointer on them that points to where we want it to. And in this case, this is a six pound gauge. Most of them are either five or six. This particular gauge is what we would test low pressure gas systems with. That means less than one pound, which is the normal pressure on most homes. We have the PRED pointer that we'll set it at, and the pressure we test these systems at is three pounds on a five pound or six pound gauge. Most of our gauges are five pound, but we do every now and then run into a six pound gauge depending on the manufacturer. How long do we need to keep that test on? Well, the code actually says 15 minutes. In fact, in one place, it says 10 minutes, but it's 15 minutes by the code. Now, at Milestone Plumbing, I don't feel comfortable with that. We've actually had many gas systems that showed up leaks after that 15 minutes, so we require all tests to be one hour. I do recommend that. Now, remember, the code says 15 minutes, but the code is a minimum set of standards. That means that's the bare minimum you can do on a plumbing job which doesn't mean it's the best plumbing job, it just means it's the bare minimum to pass code. That's why here at Milestone, we do one hour tests. At one hour, we always can tell if there's a leak on the system and we find lots of leaks on systems after we hold it one hour that we didn't have show up in 15 minutes. So my recommendation is a one hour test minimum. The longer you can leave that test on, the better. Remember, the code says 15 minutes, but the David Butler standard is one hour, no less. As I said, the first gauge I showed you was three pounds on a five pound. We also have gauges for testing two pound pressure. What's two pound pressure? We have what we call hybrid systems, which we'll talk about in other videos. A hybrid system means we're combining two pound medium pressure with low pressure that's less than one pound. And we usually do this when we're adding a tankless water heater or a generator or some large volume gas appliance to the house that wasn't originally there. We've updated it. And rather than having to repipe the entire house, we can use this. This is where we also talked about regulators. We have to have regulators on two pound systems. So how do we test that? We use a 15 pound gauge and we tested it 10 pounds on a 15. As you can see, the dial is on 10 pounds. That's where our dial is. We're gonna pump this gauge up to 10 pounds and how long we're gonna watch it? One hour. Even though the code says 15 minutes, the David Butler standard, one hour, minimum. If you can leave it overnight, that would be great. One more test in addition to the low pressure test and the two pound test, we now do in addition, it's not in the code, but it's something that we need to do because the gas company does this test. When we test a gas system, we turn off all the stops to the appliances. 
Then we air the system up against those stops. Well, there's still the gas flex, possibly a sediment trap, the connections to the appliances, and even the appliances themselves that have not been tested by our test. Now, our gas test on the two and low pressure test are gonna be inspected by the city with those stops turned off. And they're gonna give us a green tag if it holds pressure properly. But it is not going to test those parts after the stops. So after we do the test for the three pound or the 10 pound, we're gonna drain the air off the system. We're gonna open all the stops, including any valves on regulators or anything else. And we're gonna put a one pound test on. That means we're gonna be testing all the gas appliance connectors, the flexes, the sediment traps, the connections to the units, everything. And the reason we're gonna do this at one pound is because there are sensitive controls and parts on diaphragms and gas control valves that can be damaged if we put more than one pound of pressure on it. So we're gonna do a one pound test. I prefer to do this test about 30 minutes because we know the rest of the system is already good at this point. We just wanna make sure we haven't forgotten to tighten a gas flex or a cap on a sediment trap or some fitting somewhere or that we don't have possibly a gas control valve on a furnace leaking through or a gas cooktop, something that's bleeding gas through the appliance itself. So we always do this one pound test last. Now the reason we do this also is because that's the way the gas company tests it. The gas company is gonna have everything open, going all through to the appliances, everything. And they're gonna pump it up with a little small device they have and it's a very sensitive test that they put on and it tests everything. So if you go out there and you don't do this test as a plumber, and again, remember this test isn't designated in the code. It really should be in my opinion and maybe they'll add it to the code soon. But the gas company does this test so we have to match that because nothing's worse than someone's out in the cold. We've worked really hard to get their gas back on. We got a green tag from the city and then suddenly the gas company comes out, does their test and finds that you've got a leak on a gas flex or something you didn't tighten or even the furnace and they won't turn the customer's gas back on. That's awful. The customer feels awful, you feel awful. Not to mention they don't have much confidence in you anymore since there was a gas leak found by the gas company. So remember, we do a three pound test for the low pressure system on a five pound gauge. We do the 10 pound test on a 15 pound gauge for the two pound systems, medium pressure, hybrids. And at the end of all of those, we do a one pound test with every valve open and everything so that we can make sure and cover all the things that the gas company tests. So that's what our gauges look like. Now, one thing about it, as I mentioned earlier, these gauges are very delicate. Even though they cost $65, $70, they're very delicate. This particular gauge, as you noticed, I don't have any air on it. It's not hooked up to anything. This gauge is showing pressure on it. That's not good when the gauge isn't hooked up to anything. This is a bad gauge. These gauges can go bad quite often. So before you go cutting out walls and tearing things out to find gas leaks, switch gauges if you show a gas leak. Test everything that's exposed and then switch gauges if you can't find a gas leak. Oftentimes these gauges will leak. We always keep at least two of each size on our truck just for this reason. One other thing about these gauges is they do have a certification. They have to be recertified every three years. Some of the older gauges were once a year, but now they do have three year certifications on them. All gauges must have a certification on them of some sort. And that certification has to be recertified every three years. Now, most people do not get the gauges recertified. It's usually not worth it. If it's a three year old gauge, we usually wanna throw it away. It's up to you. It can be recertified, but you wanna make sure you have a good gas gauge so that you get a good gas test. Is there any such thing as an acceptable gas leak? Absolutely not. The one thing about it, you cannot leave any system with a gas leak. There's not it, oh, well, it's too small. It's not big enough to worry about any of that. Any gas leak is large enough to worry about. Always remember that. We have a little saying here at Milestone that we're chasing perfection but excellence is accepted. Unfortunately, as a plumber, you're required to be perfect when it comes to gas. There are no other options. And that's what we have to do as a plumber. Perfection is required when it comes to gas. We have to make sure there are no gas leaks on every system we work on. Always remember, three pounds on a five or six pound gauge for low pressure 
gas. That's in measuring in water column generally, inches of water column. Usually our gas pressure on that particular system, working pressure is gonna be seven to 11 inch water column. On a hybrid system, we use 10 pounds on a 15 pound gauge. And we test the entire system with the 10 pounds because in the event that one of our regulators fails, that means the entire system could be pressurized with medium pressure gas, two pounds. That means it needs to be sure and be tested at that rating so it will hold that pressure in case we have a failure of a regulator. Also remember, a one hour test. Code says 15 minutes. Yes, you can get away with that, but just in my experience, 15 minutes isn't always long enough. Sometimes leaks will show up after that 15 minutes and no gas leaks are acceptable, right? Safety is of the utmost importance when it comes to working with gas. And the way we find that out is by testing the system. I hope this has been a very helpful video. I can't stress enough as a plumber how serious gas is. We have to be perfect, as I said. Perfection is expected, perfection is required in gas. Everything else, excellence is accepted. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Remember to like this video. I look forward to seeing you next time on Serving Up Plumbing. Just tell your friends the butler did it.